This episode may contain content of a graphic nature, including descriptions of physical and sexual violence against adults, children, and animals. Listener discretion is advised. Hi everyone, I'm Talia. And I'm Tanya. And together we are Crimes and Consequences, a true crime podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Crimes and Consequences. I'm Tanya. I'm Talia. And we um, are going to get into a crazy story today. It's an older one. But before we get into it, I just want to remind everyone to hit the subscribe or follow or like on whatever app. If you're watching us on YouTube on True Crime Daily, hit the like. And I think this story... I'm just giving fair warning to everybody, is a bit graphic. And I don't know if you're familiar with the serial killer. Or was he serial killer? Ed Gein? You're going to tell us. Well, it's not about him. Oh. The, this guy was Ed Gein before Ed, Ed Gein. Gein. Yes. Okay. So his name is Carl Denke. Okay. I don't, I have no idea. I know. This is. is this is a wild story. So. Okay. So you're okay. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Four days before Christmas in 1924, a young man named Vincent Olivier came stumbling out of an apartment where a man named Carl Dunkey lived. Carl was well known in the community as someone who would help travelers with a place to stay as they were passing through Munsterberg. And this is Germany. Okay. Oh, I, oh, it's a German case. Yes, it's a German case. Nice. So, you know, when people were passing through, Carl would offer them a place to stay. Carl was single and, you know, didn't have didn't have any family living with them. So it's like an Airbnb. Yeah, it was like an Airbnb for Airbnbs. Okay. So Vincent's was bleeding terribly from his head, and the wound was clearly caused by being hit in the head with a hatchet. A hatchet. A hatchet. Like I guess you could just tell. Vincent was weak because he was losing a lot of blood, but he was screaming as loud as he could. Like, he just wanted help. He's like, help, help. Yeah, right, of course. Carl's upstairs neighbor, his name was Gabriel. He was a cab driver by trade. He heard the screaming, and he was really alarmed, because, like, what the hell's going on, right? Right. You don't Uh, normally... Help, help, help. Right. Uh, Okay. You don't normally hear people screaming for help, like blood curdling. I don't. Me either. So Gabriel ran downstairs to see what all the commotion was. And as he approached Vincent's, who was covered covered in blood by this point, the man collapsed into Gabriel's arms. While weak and still bleeding, Vincent's went on and on about the old man on the first floor, oh. Carl. He told Gabriel that Carl tried to kill him with an axe. But Gabriel didn't quite believe this. What? Even though he's got that? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, he's well known in this community. He was a Carl was a beloved member of this community, and he was a. They thought, you know, Gabriel's like he's the last person that would ever do this. That would ever do this. Right. Regardless, Gabriel knew the man needed immediate help, so he took him to the police station, where a doctor was quickly rushed to his aid. You know, to help Vincent's horrific injury. After oh. the doctor stopped the bleeding and the wound was stitched up, the doctor told the police that Vincent's was definitely attacked. There was no other explanation. I mean, this isn't I an accident. Fall on, fall a, on a hatchet. A hatchet. No. It, there's, there's no other explanation. Common. So the police are like, okay, we have to send out a couple constables to go pick up Carl to get his side of the story. And even though Carl was being brought in for questioning, nobody really believed, like I told you, he, he, he was that. capable. Right. Yeah, but the police knew something went down. And they were determined to get to the bottom of it. Wow. I know, it's crazy. So before I tell you further, I'm going to tell you a bit about Carl, because you got to know why he's so beloved and everything. He was born on August 12th, 1870, right outside a little mining village called Oberkunzendorf. <laughs> Ober, okay. Germany, which is really close to, the, to Poland's border. Okay. Carl's family was really well off. And they were very highly respected in that community because um, they were successful farmers. So that's how they gained their wealth. And everybody knew them because they were 
farmers and probably everybody got their produce and whatever, maybe animals and things like that. Who knows? When Carl was 25, his father died and the family farm was left to his older brother. His older brother gave Carl some of the inheritance money, you know, so he could kind of start a life for himself. While he took over the farm. Yeah, while he took over the farm. So Carl used that cash and he bought a small farm of his own in his hometown. However, even though farming was his family's thing, it was definitely not Carl's. He failed to make any sort of profit from the farm. I wouldn't do so well either. Yeah, me neither. I would be a really bad farmer. So he eventually sold it. And with the money, he bought a two-story home in a nearby town called Munsterberg. Munsterberg. Okay. Okay. And Carl seemed to fry. I mean, excuse me, not fry. (laughs) Freudian slip. (laughs) That's later in the story. (laughs) Carl seemed to thrive in Munsterberg. He opened a shop that was next door to his home where he sold food and other daily essentials. And so that's how everybody in the community got to know him. He also played an organ for the congregation at his what? His evangelical one? church. Sorry, <laughs> I tripped over that. That's Every okay. Sunday morning, he never drank. He didn't chase after women. And he was a, an upstanding citizen. Yeah, he just seemed, you know, just a nice guy. Hmm. He loved children in the neighborhood, and kids grew fond of him. Don't worry, he wasn't a weirdo. With okay, kids. I was just like, <laughs> mm, what does that mean? He loves children. Yeah, he just was, you he know, was, kind. Okay, he was kind. He was All kind. Right. And no one really had a bad word to say about him. After the end of World War I, and, you know, Germany fell under a huge depression because you know, right. they weren't successful. And so due to the depression, Carl's shop went under. And in 1921, he was forced to sell this two-story house that he had bought due to just being in financial straits. The people who bought his two-story house decided they were going to divide the house into smaller apartments to rent out. And okay. They allowed Carl Just to have one of the apartments. Yeah, to allow him to stay in this house, and he's he rented one of the apartments. Obviously, Carl needed a way to have money coming in, so he decided to apply for a vendor's license with the local police, and he was granted one, like to be able to sell stuff. Okay. Okay. Because he didn't have that shop anymore because it closed. but he still wanted to sell things. Yeah, he still wanted to sell things. Carl worked during the week going door to door, selling goods, and he sold everything from like shoelaces, belts, homemade soap, Mm -hmm. trinkets, suspenders. And once a week, Carl would make his way into a nearby town to set up kind of like a stand where he sold. Yeah. A little shop. A little shop. Yeah. Kind of like a little kiosk is what I'm, I'm picturing. And since the goods he had only made him so much money, he ended up adding, because, you know, I'm telling you, it's like shoelaces and soap and stuff. stuff. Yeah, small stuff. He ended up adding to his inventory jars of pickled pork, and he would sell that. Pickled pork. Yeah. And this pickled pork ended up being his biggest moneymaker. That's a big hit. Pickled pork. And. I'm thinking probably so. Why am I salivating right now? I don't know. Please don't. Anything pickled, I, I get it. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm sorry. And, you know, there, because of this depression Germany was in and the war, there's a lot of farms that failed and there was a food shortage. So that's why this was so successful. Carl knew he needed to go even further with his license and his business. So he applied to the Butcher's Guild located in Warsaw, Poland, so he could obtain a license to sell his meat there, like go over the border. And Why this was, am I getting nervous about you, him? You being should a be butcher? getting nervous because this is crazy. And getting this license was a huge deal for Carl. And he knew he could make some decent money. You know, if this license granted, he could really rake it in, I guess. Being a butcher, but he needs some meat to butcher. Yeah, he needs some meat, right? Carl had some luck. He ended up expanding his little meat market to, you know, more than just his community. He's going into Poland. Okay. So this is... He's doing well now. He's doing well. So I'm giving you a little bit of this background. He's not frying. He's thriving. He's not frying. He's thriving. Exactly. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, Carl is brought in for questioning for this attack on Vincent's. So... And how old is he at this time? He's older. He's probably about maybe 
40 or 50, I'm oh, thinking. Oh, he's, he's a baby. I know. He's just a baby. But so, back then, I'm thinking, you know, people really didn't live into old age. Maybe yeah, they did. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I didn't do I, it. I'm thinking of a feeble no, man. No, he's not feeble. He explains to the police that he offered a room in his apartment to Vincent's, who needed a place to stay for a few days. He then went on to say, you know, actually, Vincent's is the one that attacked me. I knew that was You coming. know, he was... Self-defense. He was attempting to burglarize my apartment, and I was just... What are you going to do? You got to take a Exactly. A exactly. I was just trying to defend myself. This axe was the first thing that I could grab and, you know, to fend him off. So, obviously, now we have two very contradictory stories that are being told. So, in order, obviously, to get to the bottom of all this bullshit, the police now have to do, like, a full-on investigation. During the investigation, Carl was kept in a holding cell. And around 11.30 p.m. later that night, the day he went in for questioning, one of the night officers went to see if Carl needed anything. And to their shock, Carl had hanged himself <gasps> in the cell. Mm, a sign of uh, a Something's little going bit of on. guilt going on. And there's conflicting reports. He either used an oversized handkerchief that he always carried with him or he used shoelaces. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, but just giving you a picture. But now everybody's like, why did he hang himself? I can think of a reason. <laughs> You're going, to, I'm going to tell you too. Mm -hmm. Everyone was just so confused. Like, why would this... What is going on? Why would this man, right. you know... Right. I mean, seemingly, he was defending himself, like... Why would he kill himself? Why would he kill himself? This investigation now gets crazy. All shades of fucked up? Yep. The following day, Carl's immediate family was notified of his death, and his remains were turned over to the local martician so he could be buried. Trying to get to the bottom of exactly what was going on, the police began their investigation now into why Carl committed suicide. And, and so they're like, instead of it now being this attack, now we got to start, we have to go back a few steps again. And so they began searching his home. Oh, shit. And they got a warrant, and this began on Christmas Eve. You're going to tell me what they found, Oh, you? girl, you're not, you're going to, you're going to just be flabbergasted. Oh, shit. Be, and they did this before releasing the apartment to his family. They searched and searched for anything that could explain why. When police walked into his apartment, the thing that caught their immediate attention was the stench of sour vinegar. So in this part of the world, vinegar obviously yeah. was used. Sauerkraut. Yeah, sauerkraut. Oh. And I told you about this pickled pork. So sense. it really wasn't bothersome to the police. Everyone knew that his biggest seller was this, you know, boneless pork oh, that he sold. Okay. And the smell on this particular day was coming from two large pots that were specifically used for pickling. And the pots were filled with meat and brine, and they were located in the corner of the kitchen. Close to the large pickling pots were shelves, and the shelves were stocked with jars filled with his famous pickled meats, all ready to be sold. I already know where you're going with all of this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it's pretty horrific. Oh, According to some reports, there was still some fresh pork left in the ice box as well. The meats oh. in the ice box were thought to be Carl's personal food, maybe, that he ate and mm -hmm. would serve to any guests that he had. Chemicals were also found along with equipment that Carl used to make soap and leather belts and, you know, the freshly made goods that he also sold along with his jars of meat. Initially, everything seemed to be up and up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. according to the police. That was until they came upon a pile of bones. Bones. Where was this? Uh, well, they were in his house, and they just weren't any run-of-the-mill pig bones. They appeared to be human bones. He's got a pile of bones mm -hmm. in his house. In his house. It's apartment. Yes, and some of the bones still had flesh <gasps> on them. Oh, stop. The bones that still had flesh on them were found in vats or, like, wooden drums of brine, so salt solution okay. and that's very common among butchers when you're preserving um meat mm -hmm. it keeps salt oh. keeps bacteria right, from right, forming. right right okay yeah meats um you know it also takes the water out when you're preserving so many positive things yeah you know that's great they found a total of 15 pieces of human flesh in these wooden drums with the bones still attached and they even had skin 
Oh. Still on some oh. of them. Two pieces. So I'm going to tell you what they found. That's why he killed himself. He knew. Yeah, they he knew gonna, they were going to find gonna it, find right? It. Mm-hmm. He was screwed. Yeah, he was screwed. He knew it was in his apartment. Two pieces of what they found appeared to be male pectoral muscles. And what told the police that they were male was that the skin still had like chest hair oh. on it. There was a torso found that was cut through the middle, about two and a half inches above the belly button. Um, A shoulder blade was found along with another piece of abdominal wall. In the piece of, in the middle of the piece of this abdominal wall was a belly button. Oh my, okay, all right. I mean, this is just like horrific. I mean, can you imagine stumbling upon this? You're thinking, oh, this this nice man in the community, you go into his house and you're like, (sighs) what the hell? Oh my gosh. Okay. Gosh. God, Tanya. It's, I can't even imagine. Chest hair and a belly button. Come on. You got to warn me in advance. I I told you this was bad. You didn't tell me. Okay. I told you. And I told you Ed Gein. Yeah. I mean, he knew it was bad. Yeah. Right. Okay. Don't don't my, act like you were fault. never warned. <laughs> it's For not your being fault. mentally prepared. Okay, I got this. The largest piece of human flesh found still intact was about 15 inches by eight inches, mm-hmm. and I mean that's a big piece, and it seemed to be like a part of a leg with like buttocks. Yeah. And Carl's mm-hmm. victim were both men and women. They came to find. Um. The meat in the wooden drums appeared to be a brownish red color. And this told the medical examiner on scene that the victims didn't lose too much blood during the dismemberment process. So, they're so they thinking, were already dead. Yeah, they were thinking they were already dead. Uh, not that it makes it any, you know, but at least no, it no. didn't happen while they were alive. Yeah, that would be- on the back of the pieces of human flesh, a blue discoloration was very vis- visible. The liver mortis or lividity. Uh, the lividity. Yeah. So that was showing, and this helped investigators determine usually if a body's moved after death. Yeah. In this case, yeah. The blood pooled and the bodies were dismembered after a few hours, like after a few hours from when they were murdered. And it's not really known what exactly Carl used to dismember his victims, but they did find several instruments like saws and things like that. Whatever butchers use, I'm assuming. Skin and muscles from the necks were removed and missing, and so were arms, legs, heads, and reproductive organs. Like, they didn't find those things. So, did he take out the organs because... Okay, never mind. I'm not not, not even asking questions. Go ahead. Three medium-sized pots were found with a cream-like sauce and human flesh partially cooked. A cream-like sauce? What the Mm -hmm. fuck, Tanya? I know. I know. A cream-like sauce? Are you making this up? No, I am not making this up. This is fucking horrific. What is this? I I don't think it was Alfredo sauce, but... (sighs) But this wasn't from stewing the meat. He was making a sauce. Yes, and uh, cooking the flesh. Okay. Um, Gotcha. And the meat inside the pots were pink and soft to the touch. All the pieces in the pots appeared to be cuts from, like, apparently buttock region. I don't know. Mm. Like, it reminds me of that Albert Fish episode you did where he said that one child, like, he he killed that one child and wrote the mother a letter and said, like, oh, the buttocks were, like, the most tender or something. Well, I mean, if you think about meat when you go to the store, you're often eating I'm just saying. If you're eating meat. Mm, yeah. So okay. I'm Let's, like, okay. Can we just go? I know. Can <laughs> we just go? One, hot, well, one pot had less than the other two, and it's believed that Carl had eaten from that pot mm. right before he was arrested. Okay. Um, according to it's other horrible. reports. I know. This is like. This is horrible. This is one of the most disgusting things I've ever. Well, we've had. We've had a lot of disgusting things, but oh, this I'm is just like, like what okay. the fuck? According to other reports, Carl may have given this meat to one of his guests, but it, it has seemed to appear to the police that he killed all his guests, and oh, that's the who people these people that, were. Oh, yeah. And then what did he pickle them up? And yes, he oh, pickled no. them up. He cooked them, and you know, I mean, sold them. Sold them. Along the, with the pile of human bones, the police also located a dish that contained two hundred and forty human teeth. Oh. He's collecting the teeth. Yes, each adult human. You have about thirty-two teeth. Yeah. So, Some of us and have that less. includes wisdom teeth, 
So when they get this dish of teeth, they're like, oh, no. Why would like, he not get rid of that? I don't know. He's not they, even trying to hide the evidence. The officers were just disgusted. Well, yeah. You know, what, what the, the fuck? Hell? What the hell? Yeah. The okay. next room they searched was Carl's bedroom. Oh, and God, don't be gross. This, this just was another level of fucked up. His, okay, you're going to just. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. If Tanya's getting, uh, giving a warning. Yeah. Okay. His bedroom wall was covered in dozens and dozens of pair of suspenders and belts that he had crafted himself. Mm -hmm. He told the community that the leather was from pigskin, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, this was not the case. The countless belts and pairs of suspenders hanging in his bedroom were... Don't say it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm going to say. They were made from human skin. What the fuck? I know. The closet told another horror story. It was filled with clothing, but all the pieces of his wardrobe were just covered in blood. Like, these were Carl's own clothing. He didn't I guess. wash his I didn't, clothes? didn't wash his clothes. Okay. I don't know. A bowl found in his bedroom had an orange-brown, had orange-brown colored fat. And that liquid was also human. I'm thinking this is maybe what he made the soap out of. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> like, you need fat for yeah, soap. Yeah, I, yeah, back, yeah, back in the day, yep. And remember I told you Carl sold shoelaces. Oh, what can you possibly say about shoelaces? The shoelaces were also made out of human skin. Skin. Yeah, and they were braided into laces with human hair. What? I know, like, I you don't know notice that, this when you know. buy shoelaces? They're shoelaces. I don't know. You don't notice it's hair? I, I mean, I would think I, I would notice. I bought shoelaces <laughs> with hair. I don't know what I would notice. I know, but like, maybe I'm just like, day, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking of cotton shoelaces. But anyway. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, so. Oh. Can you, I just, just can't even imagine the police officers that walked into this just fucking house of horrors. And you're just like, what, what the fuck? hell? What the fuck? Yeah, big time. Like, Real guy quit. I mean, wow. Yeah. Wow. I and, didn't even know you could. Oh, okay. And so now it's dawning on these police officers that... Here he was, he's killing people, he's skinning them, he's, you know, dismembering them. And even though, you know, this is desperate times in Germany and Poland, he's going around with this pickled meat and selling it to fucking everybody. And they're just like, oh my God. And you think that they would kind of, like, now, you know, it's coming together, you would think back like, oh, he really didn't have any pigs at his apartment. Like, where did he That's get That's what this? I said, where is he getting the yeah. meat? where is he getting the meat? Well, now... You know, he, he made a fortune mm -hmm. off of people he killed. I really feel nauseous. You know, it's fucking disgusting. Oh, Carl man. also had a shed and. How do you have it, a shed? He has an apartment. I, I know. And I'm thinking that maybe because he, this house used to be his. That right, maybe they let there him was, have the shed. Yeah, they let him have the shed. So you can imagine what was in the shed after I just told you what was all in the <sighs> apartment. Um, but you're going to tell me anyway mm -hmm. what what there were more bones found in the shed and there were just i mean barrels filled with human bones how many bones oh i don't even know there i'll tell how you later there, how yeah. many how many people they think he oh. were suspected of but wow and these were clean bones he you know they're old they're the old, old ones things. they're from the people that he killed earlier and so i'm thinking you know that's where he would move them after he was done with you know Whatever he Picking did. Picking the flesh and whatever. whatever. He, did. he had created a man-made pond for himself what? also. He created a man-made pond. pond. Okay, in all the, right. Um, in the yard? I don't know. All right. I don't know. And he used that to dispose of human remains, but they ended up finding some human remains. Like, he didn't do a very good job of disposing of them. Like, they found a leg um, in a there. Leg. Yeah. And there was also a forest nearby, and he tried to dispose of remains there but what they the also found all this shit i know that's what i'm like, thinking this right it's been going on a long time it's been going on for years in the woods they um found like spine bones and pelvis bones why isn't he um, keeping it at least all together putting it all in the shed why are you taking more risks when you have it all over i know you're spreading it out like instead of keeping it contained and under lock and key maybe it's just through the years is you know and everything it, changed you know maybe just got a little crazy too i don't know oh, like doesn't i've think? heard i yes, have not think? done it but it doesn't did it, hasn't it been studied like if you eat human human flesh like 
it does something to your brain and kind of like i think if it's cooked it's just me really i don't know i don't know i, I thought i heard I'm that i'm not a trained i don't know either i'm like i don't hmm. know i'm just a lawyer i'll look that up we'll google that on the pelvic bones that they found they found jagged cuts which told the police that he tried to use saws um to dismember his victims um and out of all the people that went through his home they only found one piece of a skull so God only knows what he what did, did with, those. with those. And that was a piece of a sinus bone. So it appeared that Carl was able to cut up that piece with a saw. Um, since like that piece of sinus bone, since there was also a jagged cut on that. I don't know where the other skulls were. I have no idea. Um, the bones that they found in the woods seemed to have belonged to at least three victims. Um, and that they seem that they were very strong, like they weren't like a delicate bone structure. So I'm thinking maybe that they, they were men. Men? Yeah. Okay. So many bones were found. I'm going to tell you there was just like every bone you can possibly think of in your body, like femurs. There was finger, like phalanges, toes, clavicles. I mean, I'm not even going to go. I'm not even gonna, like there's whole like articles you can read that tell you like the number of like the number of femur bones they found and oh. wrist bones and. It was crazy, um, but it's it's a lot. There it's were a lot. lot of bones. Some of them were shattered and broken. Um, you know, maybe they had been crushed with like a hammer. I don't know if he was doing that, like either with a hammer, or like the blunt side of an axe. So I don't know if he was doing that to try to get rid of, break up the bones like into smaller pieces them or something. Yeah, to pulverize them. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously he wasn't around to ask. Um, other bones seemed to have been cut with a knife. Or chopped with an axe. Um, based on what was found, they found about eight victims in the pond in the forest altogether. Um, and even the barrels. They had yeah. That's not even counting the barrels. That's, not counting that's the barrels. just the pond in the forest. Even more bones were located after the end of World War II in the late forties. Um, Where? What do you mean they found more? Yeah, and they, there's property mm -hmm, around there. Property around there. Yeah. Um, he just had quite the collection. A total, remember I told you that one bowl or whatever had 240 teeth, yeah. but a total of 351 teeth were discovered. And he kept a majority of them in that dish I told you about, <laughs> which is just fucking weird. And the teeth Did were- Did he not have normal friends come over? Because how do you explain I'm this stuff? I'm thinking no. Hey, Tanya, ignore the dish of teeth. I know, that's what I'm thinking and the no. the stench of death and right? the pickled stuff. Like people just walked- Did he not have friends? Nobody- I what? know. Nobody came to his apartment? I don't know. I guess not. Uh, through the count of the teeth, the police bought, thought that they were at least 20 victims, but maybe closer to 25, just based on the number of teeth. Um, Amazing. Yeah. It's believed that the total number of victims were close to about 40, but nobody will know for sure. I mean, that's just based on what they found. You know, what? where is all the stuff maybe they didn't find? Right. You know? gross and from what they found okay not that this can make you feel any better but they only found adult bones so they did not find any children's bones so it doesn't appear that he harmed any children but they did find teeth from a younger victim um i'm thinking maybe like an adolescent who knows but no children a good percentage of his victims were adults and some to some appeared to be much older so even like older obviously older maybe senior citizens um do we the, know the victims do we know I'm, who they are? no and i'm thinking these were all people like it, it was near where he lived was near i believe either a train station i think it was a train station so people were just passing through and i believe like you said it was like an airbnb like he would help people like oh i have a place to stay and because he was well known in the community nobody really thought anything about it and um, and they're probably just getting a place to stay for a little bit, and there's yeah. no cell phones, right? You know, you, and people are just passing through. Right. You know, if I'm traveling through this town, that you know, you don't like you said, there's no cell phones, there's really no way to track them, so people just disappear, and nobody, there's no record of them. Um, but he did keep a record, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. The accessories that. Carl made from his victims were sent out for testing. 
the suspenders were strictly human skin. Oh, Lord have mercy. Each pair was about two and a half inches wide and 27 and a half inches long. Um, the- well, I don't even know the amount of time it would take to take and make suspenders from human skin. Tell me about it, right? From a body. I, I can't. This is all he did. Mm-hmm. He didn't right. have a girlfriend, right? Didn't no. have a wife. Yeah, didn't have didn't, kids. Yeah, no, not. he had nothing else going on. Yeah, and it's a hobby. Human leather, I guess. This human leather didn't feel smooth like regular leather. Um, it didn't appear that he tanned it, so I don't know if he just dried it out. I don't even know what it means. To tan. I don't know. What does it mean to tan uh, leather? Tan it. Like, I think you like have to like. Um, it's fine. Like pro- like process it like. Um, I've seen it on TV. I can't remember, but like you have to like, like, not touch it. You're using an instrument to okay. to make it right. more supple. So he didn't even do it properly. Oh. Um, at one spot on one of the suspenders, it was obvious that the cuts were made from under the nipple of his victim. Four pair, four pairs were found that they were patched or spliced together, um, with human skin that was taken from pubic areas. Um, yeah, he was even wearing a pair of his suspenders that oh. he made when he hung himself. Stop it. Mm-hmm. He gross, gross, gross <sighs> fucker. I know he cut leather straps out of human skin and he treated those with shoe polish. They were found to have pieces of non-human fabric and cloth sewn into them. And as I mentioned, these shoelaces he made. Yeah. One particular pair of shoelaces was gray and white, so his um, victim was elderly. And many of the laces' origins couldn't be determined, but that just means that the hair could have been taken from elsewhere on the human body, depending on the length of the hair. Let me place this. Um, okay, never mind. No one, we kind of talked about this, you know, no one really questioned where this pickled pork came from. And this realization that, holy shit, he was selling this meat to his neighbors. Um, God. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. All those poor neighbors. And mm-hmm. I mean, this like splashed in the newspapers. You can only imagine when people were like, oh, oh Lord. On the windowsill. And a table in Carl's bedroom, there was a nice little neat stack of papers. They were documents that Carl kept as records and a history, history of everyone that he took in. These records went for the entire three years that he murdered. Skinned in So this eight, was only over three years. Over three years. Okay. It was from 1921 to 1924. Mm. In the ledger. Um, These pull pl- pl- Prolific. Thank you. (laughs) In this ledger, it it had details of 31 victims. And the notes on the documents listed the names of each victim, the date that he murdered them, how many pounds of meat he was able to get from them. Stop it. Yeah. Along with these papers were personal documents and identification papers for 12 of his victims. Like I'm thinking maybe like a passport, passport or something. Or certificate or something like he that. also kept newspaper clippings that listed names of people who were about to be released from nearby hospitals or prisons because maybe he preyed on those too, I'm thinking. He knew that around town he was the go-to person, like if anyone needed Need a, place a place to, to stay. stay. You yeah. go see Carl. So, you know, he would show up and be like, hey, you can come and stay with me. He had quite the collection of various coins. Um, I'm thinking he probably stole them. From his victims. The various tools that were thought to be used, I told you they weren't sure exactly what he used, but like I said, they found a large saw. They Axe. and yeah, they used like a wood, ch- there was like a wood chopping saw, and then there's another type of saw that cuts down a tree, and then a pick sa- pickaxe, knives, axes. They were all sent out to see if they had traces of human blood. Um, and they did. They all had positive, they were all positive for human blood. Of course. Wow. Then the police were like, okay, we have to send a jar of the pickled meat. Stop it. We have to know. We have to know. I mean, they did. They know. They know. Yeah, to no one's surprise. Oh, no. no All of the jars. No, 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 no. no. In the kitchen were human. All of them. So, yeah. Oh, my fucking And pickled meat is a traditional meat that's served 
on New Year's dinner. So, yeah. Every jar. Every jar. How horrific. So horrible. Oh, my God. Oh, my I, God. He's selling them to people and they're eating. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I wonder if they thought it tasted different. It sounds horrible to say, but. I know. Like, like, well, it's pickled. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, that's a thought. So. Wow. What else you got for me, Tanya? When the story broke, obviously the press had a field day. Um, They. The local paper, I mean, coincidentally, it was called Journal Frankenstein. I mean, not that Frankenstein was a cannibal or he dismembered people, but yeah. It went in really hard with the details. They left nothing out. I mean, they, I'm sure people were horrified. Well, yeah. To read. I'm horrified. To read, yeah. Um, So Carl was eventually nicknamed the cannibal of Munsterberg. Never heard of him. I know, right? I never heard of him either. The police took all of the documents that were discovered in his apartment and they were able to identify at least 20 victims, which was about two thirds of the names listed. Like they tracked down family and things like that. Oh man, you imagine those families. Uh, Yeah. Um, A lot of German history uh, reports and documentation was lost in the bombing of during the wars. wars. Yeah. Um, But there's a small museum in Zebes, Poland, and they displayed some of the stuff that was found in Carl's um, apartment, like the va- some of the vats, jars, knives, and other pieces of his equipment. They did that in 1999. Does it sound wrong that I would want to see that? No, I would just want to be horrified by it. I mean, I've been to the museum, real. the museum of death in Los Angeles, like. I know it's bad, but I'm like fascinated. I'm always fascinated at all the fucked up shit people do. I know. I prefer that mm -hmm. veil that makes it not so real, Mm -hmm. not seeing it. In a nice little museum. And, you know, you see a knife in a museum. It's not like you're going to the house and finding people's bones. Yeah. So. Cops. Yeah. Um, Poor family. And I think about poor Vincent's. I mean, oh, yeah. not poor Vincent's. He actually survived. Thank but, God. But do you know, can you imagine what he thought? He would have been pickled. I know. And if he hadn't gotten out, like how much longer would this have gone on? Oh, yeah. I mean, how he many more people would have died? More. Yeah. He definitely saved people by getting the hell out of Carl's home and wow. being able to bring attention to what happened. So, um, yeah. Isn't that a crazy story? Yeah, it's a crazy story. I know. I was Jesus, just. You, you know, you got to get. You know, you told me it was messed up. I told you it was messed up. Man. It's super messed up. Like, yes. I just, and I never heard of this guy. No, no. I'm like, not ever going to be a pickled anything now. I know, and you love pickled stuff. Just don't eat any pickled meat. No, don't. You're good. Pic- just pickled I vegetables. Eat, I don't eat mm-hmm. pickled meat anyway. Yeah, no, me I neither. Tr- I've never trusted it. Yeah. Now I know why. Well, now you know why. You had that little voice in your head was like, don't, don't eat trust it. it. Don't do it. That's don't horrible. It. I know. This is just Poor an families. awful story. These... I mean, it affected so many people, like not even like the people in the community knowing that this beloved person. There's so many people. Yeah. But like the victims, the victims and their families. Their families. Like the people even, that ate the meat. Yeah. Like to, to know like my loved one, like I don't even have like anything oh. I can possibly bury. Like my husband or my ho- loved one ended oh, up in a jar. That, oh, like, God. I'm just, oh, it's horrific. It's so cruel. Yeah, it's extremely Well, cruel. he did the world a favor. I guess. I guess. Well. Yeah. Hanging himself. Yeah. At least, you know, they didn't have to put him on trial and. Then all that. That hullabaloo. He would have just yeah. been hanged anyway. Yeah, he would have been hanged anyway. Definitely. He would have definitely been convicted. I mean, what was he going to say that's not mine? <laughs> oh, yeah. You got a pair on. You got the suspenders on. Like, come on. That's just. Wasn't me. No, but anyway. You'd be amazed how many times they say, wasn't, wasn't me. me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Yeah. I don't know how they got pickled <laughs> in my house. The 400 jars. I mean, I don't know how many there were, but. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Well, you want to. Uh, it's lunchtime. Wrap it up. Yes. It's lunchtime. <laughs> it's lunchtime. Unfortunately. No, it's not uh, a joke. No, I know. I'm like, it actually my is, appetite is no I'm not longer. Hungry. Thank mm-hmm. you for ruining that. For You're me. welcome. You know, it's a <laughs> diet plan. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And thank you, Talia, for listening to this horrific story. 
Thank you for listening either um, on your podcast app or watching us on YouTube on the True Crime Daily YouTube channel. Yeah. We appreciate it. If you would like to hit the subscribe slash follow slash like button on whatever you're watching us on, that would be great. Um, If you'd like more episodes, um, you can go to patreon.com slash TNT crimes where we have episodes you can pay for. We release one new episode a week. Um, in addition Ashley. to these, yep, that are in addition to these episodes, and if you also become a Patreon member, you get these episodes ad free and early release. Um, we have can, one billion thousand episodes that haven't been released to the public. So if you're interested, um, you could also subscribe through your Apple app if you're so inclined. And our website is crimesandconsequences.com. You can check that out. There's also merch on our website. So if you would like to support us that way, that would be great. And yeah. And if you go to the patreon.com slash TNT crimes, you're going to find it's a little bit different. We are a little more gritty, grittier, grittier might be a good word. Yeah. I mean, we have to, we have a TV persona. Yeah. (laughs) And then we have, we have our real selves. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> that you only She's get. She's got a potty mouth from <gasps> hell. Trust oh, me. So I said I said some bad words in this episode because oh, yeah, well, it's just I've seen, disgusting. I've seen you on fire. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is not me on fire yet. No. Anyway, until our next episode, don't kill each other. Bye. Bye. Bye.